Hello, everyone. Today, we'll be talking about building Xamarin apps with ArcGIS Runtime SDK for .NET. My name is Thad Tilton. I'm a product engineer with the ArcGIS Runtime SDK team for .NET. And uh, with me is Nathan Castle, who is also a product engineer on the team. So today, we're going to be starting with an overview of Xamarin, just to give you some context. Talk about what it is and why you'd want to use it. We'll look at how it works with ArcGIS Runtime. Um, so our assumption is going to be that you're probably new to Xamarin. Maybe you've tinkered with it a little bit. Maybe you know Xamarin, but you haven't created a Xamarin app that uses ArcGIS Runtime. So um, we're going to kind of start, not at the very beginning, but we'll give you some, some context both with Xamarin and with ArcGIS Runtime. And then we'll talk about getting started. Uh, some of the, uh, we'll focus on some of the resources and tools that are available for you. Um, the SDK itself, of course, the documentation, the samples, toolkits, um, we'll, all the things that can help get you up and running. We'll look at developing apps with Xamarin. There's a couple of choices that you have here when you're putting your app together. Do you want to use Xamarin Forms or a native app? We'll look at what that means here in a bit. Um, how do you want to share your code? Do you want to use a shared project or perhaps a .NET standard library? So a couple of choices that you have when you put together your solution, and we'll talk more about that as well. Um, along the way, we'll build a simple app, and we'll show you how you can leverage some of the resources as you go through it and, and build that app out. And along the way, we'll have a few tips and tricks for you as well. So the first thing I want to start with is just showing you an app that um, I've already created here. And um, so I have a Xamarin app. This is the app that we'll build out throughout the demo here. So it's a simple app. It's a, a place finder. And um, this works in San Diego. Um, I chose San Diego because I had a network data set that I could use for routing there. But notice this one app, this is a Xamarin Forms app, so it's using the exact same code and the exact same definition for the UI. Notice how it's rendered differently on the two platforms that I'm, I'm running on here. So I have iOS on the right and Android on the left. And they both look like what you'd expect for an iOS or an Android app. Um, so obviously a lot of code sharing going on here. Um, so this is the app that we'll build out. We'll uh, be able to choose a place, uh, a point of interest category to look for. So here I'm looking at coffee in my Android app and ice cream over here on iOS. Um, I can see my current location. I can click to get more information about these places, and I can route to those locations as well. And I can also view a website for one of those locations. OK. That's going to take a while to load. I'll just close it. Um, and I can also do things like this. I can add a new category. And as soon as I click that, I'll be able to, I'll be presented with those places of interest and all the same functionality. Okay, so this is the app that we'll walk through and um, more for just illustrating some of the, the uh, most important kind of fundamentals of Xamarin, how to organize, how the, the project is organized, um, how you share your code, and um, some of the resources that you can use to, to put your code together. Okay, so um, let's start then with an overview of Xamarin and uh, Nathan will take us through that. Yeah, so uh, Xamarin is an excellent technology for uh, .NET developers primarily to build mobile applications using the technologies they're familiar with, including the .NET Runtime and C Sharp. Uh, Xamarin has a few different offerings, um, and a few different ways to make apps. The two primary ways being uh, native applications and Xamarin Forms. Uh, with native applications, you get the full um, power of the native platform. So that means on Android, you're using Android AXML layouts, you're using activities and intents. Um, and on iOS, you're using UI kit, UI view controllers, navigation controllers, um, storyboards if you want to. 
Um, and uh, while that's very powerful, it also has a concern of you need to, in addition to knowing the stuff you're familiar with, um, with .NET, you need to also know each platform's individual uh, UI patterns and APIs, um, and that can limit the amount of code sharing you have to do. Um, with Xamarin Forms, which is the other part, you can share 80 to 90 percent of your code um, and get a very similar uh, experience on both Android and iOS and possibly also UWP if you want to target that. Um, all with a development experience that's more similar to what you're accustomed to with WPF or UWP applications. Um, now, the uh, .NET technology or the Xamarin technology um, has been really well integrated with uh, Visual Studio, both on Windows and Mac. Um, so you have the the rich application development tools, which make it really fast to develop applications, especially compared to um, the native offerings from like Xcode and Android Studio. Um, uh, Xamarin Forms makes it really easy to use XAML um, and the technology you're familiar with, rather than having to gear up on um, UI kit and the native uh, platform uh, APIs on Android. Um, one note is on uh, in Xamarin, everything's powered by Mono, which is the open source .NET implementation. Um, that may change going forward. Uh, it really doesn't uh, show through. It doesn't really affect the development experience, but it's uh, worth knowing about as a, a technical point of interest. Uh, so .NET. Uh, is available just about everywhere. Uh, for Xamarin in particular, that means iOS and Android. As Xamarin Forms does, in addition to that, support uh, Windows through UWP and WPF. Um, ArcGIS Runtime only supports um, Xamarin through Android, iOS, and then Xamarin Forms on UWP. So just be aware of that. You're not going to be able to do um, WPF or Tizen or uh, Mac OS just because Xamarin supports it. Um, you can write code using C Sharp and your UI markup in XAML, and that's all completely shareable. Um, we've put a lot of work into making sure that the ArcGIS runtime APIs are identical across iOS, Android, UWP, WPF, um, and all the platforms you're trying to target. Um, and should you need access to the native UI, you can do that um, through XAML and UWP, storyboards on iOS, auto layout, um, and then AXML and, and on Android. Uh, and um, I do want to make a quick note that if you're using Xamarin Forms, even though Xamarin Forms itself doesn't expose all of the uh, platform features that each individual platform has, you can use technologies like uh, renderers to create custom UIs as you need them. And one of the the questions we get a lot is why would you use Xamarin instead of developing with the native platform? So that would be um, Swift and Xcode for iOS and um, Java or Kotlin and Android Studio for Android. And the big reason, um, the few big reasons are it's a really fast uh, development experience. You can get applications going quickly, especially where you can share that code and avoid duplicating effort. Um, <coughs> You can get apps that look like they're built for the native platform. Uh, Xamarin tends to be better at that than some of the other competing technologies, which um, will have a unique theme that doesn't quite fit on any of the platforms it's targeting. Uh, there's an extensive developer community, uh, especially with like Stack Overflow, uh, the Xamarin forums, the Visual Studio community. Um, it's pretty rare that you're going to have a question that isn't already answered somewhere. And you get the power, the full power of C Sharp and uh, the amazing .NET standard library uh, and, and framework, which can make it really a really powerful and enjoyable application development experience, at least in my personal opinion. So as I discussed earlier, there, there are two major approaches to developing for Xamarin. Uh, the first is Xamarin Forms, which allows you to share the same UI layout code and application logic across all of the platforms you're targeting. So you write your application UI once, 
in the Xamarin flavor of XAML, which is very similar to what you've experienced on WPF or UWP if you've done apps for desktop windows, uh, with the same pattern of you declare elements in your XAML, and then you can wire them up in code behind or use binding uh, if you're following the model view, view model pattern, which we highly recommend. Um, now the, the cons here are that you only have a subset of UI elements. Um, they are rendered as native controls on each platform, but that can make it a little bit harder to predict what your app is going to look like. Um, as you can see here, uh, the date picker control looks totally different on iOS, Android, and UWP, uh, which means you do have to test your UI on each of these platforms, and you may have to do some tweaks uh, for each to make it look exactly as you want it. Um, Xamarin Forms is really, really great if you're trying to make, um, as the name implies, any sort of business forms, um, data entry apps, um, especially if you don't care what the UI looks like to a pixel perfect degree, Xamarin Forms is going to get you to a working app a lot faster than native Xamarin will. Now, if you want to take full advantage of the native platform capabilities, so that means you want to use Apple Pay, you want to use native iOS um, ARKit, you want to do um, things that look really, really great as native applications, heavily customized UIs, um, you're going to want to use Xamarin Native uh, in a lot of cases. Now, the downside here is that each UI has to be created in that platform's uh, specific API and UI framework, which means in addition to knowing, let's say you want to target Android, iOS, and UWP, you need to know XAML, you need to know iOS UI layout either through storyboard or through code, and you need to know how to do that in Android. Um, and each of these have very different developer models and developer experiences, so that can be a challenge. Uh, but if you need that pixel-perfect control, uh, that's going to be your best route. Now, I do want to mention there are, are three code sharing options. Um, I'll start with portable, portable class libraries, um, also known as Pickles. Those are deprecated. Um, they were a great technology, but they had some limitations that made them harder to use effectively. Um, in particular, each uh, platform that you're targeting would have a different subset of APIs, and it was really hard to write apps that were fully cross-platform without using some API that wasn't available everywhere. Uh, that was largely fixed with the .NET standard library, which brought a lot of uh, common functionality to every uh, supported version of the .NET uh, runtime or every implementation. So that means you can use things like system.drawing.color on, um, on Xamarin now, which is excellent. Um, and the ArcGIS runtime libraries have been fully updated to take advantage of that. Um, now, the other option is shared projects, um, which unlike being a library, which would be sort of linked into your application, um, this code is actually, the shared project code is included in your platform specific project uh, at compile time, which allows you to do things like use compiler directives based on which platform you're targeting um, to change the code in subtle ways or, or significant ways. Um, the downside there is it can be a little bit harder to get predictable behavior um, and it enables you to um, couple things to the specific platform in ways that uh, may not be appropriate. Um, all right, so I'm going to switch over to my screen and show you how to create a Xamarin project. Um, so I'm over here on, on my Windows box, um, and I, I do want to highlight one of the big benefits of Xamarin is that you can use the native development tools that you're familiar with. So in this case, that means Visual Studio uh, to build iOS and Android apps, um, which I personally think is a really great experience, uh, especially if you, you're accustomed to using Visual Studio. It gives you a lot more in terms of developer support than um, some of the native tools do. Now, I just want to highlight one thing, which is when you install the ArcGIS Runtime SDK for uh, Windows, 
Um, you get project templates in Visual Studio, which make it really easy to get started with a runtime app. Um, this isn't required. You can always just create a new um, base project with the built-in templates and then add the runtime SDK references via NuGet. Uh, but I'm going to use the templates for now, uh, if I can find my cursor. And I search for runtime, and then I'm going to select Forms, uh, Shared. We have templates for both .NET Standard and Shared. Either of these approaches is valid. I'm going to click Next. I'm just going to give my app a name and click Create. Now I do want to point out that I'm using this through Parallels on a Mac. So um, on this one Mac laptop, I can use uh, Visual Studio and Windows for development. Um, but because it's directly sort of running on a Mac, um, it's easy to get it set up so I can actually deploy iOS applications um, directly here and then switch over and run them on the same machine I'm developing with. All right, so you see with this template, we've We've created um, four projects, and so we have an Android project, an iOS project, and a UWP project. When you run any of these applications, that's what you're running, is that project. And then at compile time, all of this code in the shared project is pulled in. Um, it's referenced by each of these individual projects. So you can see, if I go into the references, you can see we have the shared project reference. Um, and what's significant about that is it means that this, you can sort of think about this app.cs, main page, or map page, and map view model objects as being in um, each of these three projects simultaneously. Um, so I've got a UWP application, an iOS application, which I've set to my startup project, and I've configured Visual Studio to pair to my Mac. So I'm going to select, I'm currently in the debug configuration. I'm going to select iPhone simulator. And because I'm connected to the Mac, it has a list of the simulators available to me. Uh, and I'm just going to click Run. And so this will go ahead and build the application. And when it's ready, it will deploy to the simulator, and uh, it'll switch over. Now while that's building, I want to walk through um, this application, which is set up with a very basic uh, MVVM pattern. So we see we have the view, which is XAML, and so this is XML. We have the map view model is declared, and that's going to be created at runtime. Um, and then we have this map view uh, object, and it's bound to the map in the map view model. And this map view model, uh, if you're familiar with the MVVM pattern, it's a iNotify property changed object, and that has a map property. Now, because the uh, app is finished building and it's currently being deployed to the simulator, it, it automatically opened up. And the app launches, and we can see this basic map. This was all right out of the box. Um, no extra code written. And this is all, um, all XAML UI uh, with the Xamarin framework. Nothing platform specific about this. I can also run this app for UWP and for Android, and it's going to look about the same everywhere. Um, going back to the map view model, uh, we've got the private map property, and then the, um, or excuse me, the private map field, and then the public map property, uh, which is bound to, and then this implementation of the iNotify property changed, uh, which makes it really, uh, uh, which facilitates the MVVM binding pattern, uh, which makes it really easy to keep your UI in sync with the latest state of your uh, your view model uh, while minimizing the amount of code you have to write. 
And I think that's it for my demo, so I'm going to hand it over back to Thad. Cool. All right. Thanks, Nathan. Yeah. I think that's um, those templates are really pretty handy. I think it's cool. Um, I, I mean, it, it doesn't look like much. You get a map. Um, it's pretty easy to get a map in, in your app, but it's cool that all the, <clears throat> the MVVM framework is all there and ready to go. So um, it, it does help you get up and running with a, a good, clean MVVM application. So um, I'm going to continue to talk about getting started here. And um, so with Xamarin for ArcGIS Runtime SDK for .NET, there's the, the SDK includes quite a few APIs. Um, so in addition to the Xamarin APIs, of course, we have WPF and UWP. For Xamarin, you can use the native APIs for um, Xamarin native iOS or Android. And Xamarin Forms, which, as we've mentioned a couple times, supports iOS, Android, and UWP. And um, that's the app that we'll be creating here uh, for the rest of the presentation. Um, as I think uh, Nathan mentioned this, one of the real benefits of our, AP, our um, API, all these APIs, is the fact that there's one common .NET API surface. Um, really a, a nice benefit when it comes to sharing code. Um, code that you write within you know, our APIs, you can move that between all these different platforms and it just works. Um, you know, it's interesting when I write some of the uh, conceptual doc for, for the SDK, I have to uh, keep in mind that I'm writing this for a bunch of different platforms. So iOS, Android, um, UWP, WPF, but it's never really an issue when I'm writing code snippets or anything else because staying within um, our APIs, there's there's nothing that's platform specific, so it's really a nice feature. So, what do you get with the SDK? Well, of course, you can you can use the SDK as NuGet packages. You can load those into your Visual Studio projects. Um, that's probably the most common and the easiest way to do it. So, we have APIs for all those different platforms that we support. Uh, keep in mind, there's also a NuGet package for a toolkit for all these different platforms as well. And um, I'll show you a little bit of that later. Uh, we'll use some of those tool toolkit controls. Um, but yeah, real easy to add as a package into your project and start uh, using in forms. Really simple, just a, a few lines of XAML and you'll be up and running for a lot of those controls. Um, now we also have a, a V6 installation that you can install on your uh, Visual Studio for Windows. Um, so you can just use the Visual Studio Extension Manager, for example, um, to install um, the, the V6 and get all the templates that Nathan showed you. So uh, on Windows, of course, those are available, not on Mac. Um, it also gives you all the local NuGet packages. Um, so if you're working in a, you know, a secure environment where you can't get out to the internet to download packages, you can always install the, the V6 and get those packages locally as well. So some other things that you can get here for the SDK, and again, these are some of the resources that I'll point to when we're building our app and show you, you know, where I found some code that I could just borrow and bring over. I found an answer to a question and whatnot. Uh, samples, of course, is a, a good place to start. I like our samples because they're very fine-grained and they each sample really shows you how to do one thing. Um, so it's very focused, and if you have something in particular that you want to do, samples is a good place to start to look for that. Um, so the URL I'm showing you here is to the GitHub repo, where you can you know clone that repo and, and have the code run the viewer um, locally. You can also, from our uh, developers.arcgis.com slash .net landing page, you can go to a, a samples page that describes you know, the documentation metadata for all these samples, as well as the code, um, if you want to just work with it that way. And that's a nice way to look at the samples because it's searchable. And you can search for keywords or even just um, you know, maybe a method or a, some part of the API that you're looking for specifically and find a sample that you need. Um, the toolkit I mentioned um, is available as a NuGet package, but we also have the source available on GitHub. So you can um, look at that source code as well. And that can come in handy if you need to maybe make a tweak to one of these tools. Um, do it. Uh, make it do something a little bit different for your purposes. Um, I also want to point out that the toolkit contains um, AR tools now as well, some really cool AR stuff that you can do. Um, 
There's open source apps, really good place to start. Um, these are really uh, professional apps that are pretty much production ready. And um, they're well documented and configurable. So you can actually make them your own by um, can just some simple configuration and, and gathering up the data that you need to make them work. So that's also a good place to start. We'll look at uh, plenty of documentation, of course. We have conceptual doc as far as the uh, developer's guide, API reference for lower level stuff, and as I mentioned, samples. Uh, we have tutorials to get you started if you're brand new, maybe not to, our, to runtime, but even if you're just new to the ArcGIS platform and you want to know how do I make a web map, how do I make a hosted layer or style, um, a vector base map, things like that. That's a good place to start. Um, and then a late addition here, demo apps. I almost forgot about this URL, so I added this here. Uh, Whenever we give a presentation at, uh, well, not every time, but oftentimes when we give a demo for a uh, conference like UC or Fed GIS or uh, Dev Summit, our code will end up here on this dev, uh, demo apps repo. So there's some good stuff there that you might want to take a look at, some really cool uh, apps and demos. And then, of course, don't forget about GeoNet, good place to get questions answered and um, also find just other information as far as blogs and things that might be of interest. Okay, sorry, that was kind of a brain dump here, but we will look at some of these resources as we're writing our code, and hopefully you'll get a feel for how useful they can be. Um, one last thing I wanted to mention here before I, I jump right into the demo is something called Xamarin Essentials. And Xamarin Essentials is a really cool package that you can include in your project, and it contains a whole bunch of cross-platform mobile APIs. Um, this is all well documented on the, the Microsoft Docs site, so um, I would encourage you to take a look and see what's available there. We'll use this a little bit in the demo as well, so you'll get a feel for some of the things you can do. But So the cool thing about it is it abstracts some common functionality across all these platforms, um, so it makes it real easy to just write you know, the code once that will work across all your different platforms, and it abstracts away a lot of this stuff that can be kind of uh, complicated and, and convoluted across platforms. Um, and I've given you just a kind of a sampling of some of the handy APIs. There's a whole bunch there. This is just some of the highlights. All the different sensors that might be available on, on the device, like um, gyroscope, compass, and so forth. Uh, system information, you know, the device display information or basic device information that you might need. A lot of utilities like color converters. We'll use this one open browser that uh, opens a browser cross-platform, just uses the whatever the system default is to open up a URL. And uh, geolocation is one as well. well. We'll take a quick look at that. Since we have RGS runtime, we don't really need to worry too much about getting geolocation from elsewhere. Okay, so let's go ahead and write some code here. So I created a, an app from a template here uh, for Xamarin Forms. Now, since I didn't have the the SDK installed, um, like I, I could do on a Windows machine, like, like Nathan showed us, um, I couldn't use any of the ArcGIS runtime templates. Instead, I used a default template that comes with Xamarin, and this is called the Shell template. And it's really pretty cool because uh, if you remember the app that I showed you here at the beginning, um, you could get a feel for what the Shell template gives you. Um, I had a built-in hamburger menu with some menu choices. I had some tabs with buttons at the bottom to switch between those tabs, um, sort of built-in page navigation. So that's the template I used, and it's also MVVM. So you can see um, here's my shared project, and this has all the code that we're going to use for the application. So these are my models, view models, view, um, and also the the UI, of course, from Xamarin Forms here in Views. So this is where all the action is, and this is where we'll spend our time building out our app. We have a couple other projects, one for Android, one for iOS. Um, I don't have UWP, of course, because I am developing on Mac, Visual Studio for Mac. And it might look like I have a lot going on here in these projects, but really this is kind of just boilerplate stuff, um, some packages that I need and some references, some just uh, standard assets and, and resources. Um, really, I just need the main activity and main.cs to launch the applications for those platforms, but all the code that makes it work is right up here. So um, again, I opened this from the template, um, a standard shell template from the Xamarin templates. 
I haven't actually done a whole lot here to the app at this point. Um, I did add some references. So I have ArcGIS runtime here. I have a XML namespace reference for that and also the toolkit. So I've, I've added those packages. I have some simple XAML here that will show a map view. And in the map view, I am binding to a map property from my view model. And then I'm going to have some code in the code behind to, to um, handle clicks on the, on the map view. So I'm handling GeoView tapped. A little later, we'll add some uh, toolkit controls and another button. But for now, all I have is this map. Okay, so in the code behind for that view, you might take a quick look and think, well, that's kind of an awful lot of code to have in a code behind for a view. Yeah, MVVM, um, you know, the goal is to separate out UI code from sort of the business logic. So while there is a lot of code here, this is all UI related stuff. And, um, you know, depending on who you talk to, some people might argue and say, yeah, that probably belongs in the view model instead of the view and people might go back and forth. But I like to keep anything that deals with the, the view in the code behind for the view itself. And so, for example, I have um, graphics overlays defined here. Uh, graphic overlays are added to the map view. The map view is a UI control. So that's all kind of UI type stuff. Um, you can see here that I create my, my view model and I bind it up. That um, Then you know, the map appears in the view model at that point. OK, so um, let's take a quick look at getting the location. So right now, kind of more for just um, illustration than anything else, I've used Xamarin Essentials here to get the location for the device just to show you how this works. So this will work across all the different platforms. Um, I use the geolocation API from Xamarin Essentials. Once I get that location, I use that to make a map point. So this is an ArcGIS runtime map point. I pass in the long longitude, latitude, and then I'm just going to set the, the viewpoint center at that location. So that code just makes sure that um, I'll go ahead and run this. Um, I'm on iOS right now. So that code just makes sure that when the map shows up in the map view, it'll, it'll zoom to the device location right off the bat. And I, I won't see the map at um, a global scale. OK, so redeploying. And notice how fast that builds and deploys, too. Uh, that's one of the nice things about working on uh, Visual Studio for Mac for iOS. Um, your debug cycles can move a lot quickly, a lot more quickly, as you um, you make changes and rebuild. Okay, so notice there, and nothing too earth shattering. I have now from the from the template, I have this items list, and I can click on stuff that shows my details page that's linked up with the view model, and um, I get the map, and then I'm using Xamarin Essentials to show me the the center of that map. Okay, so not too bad. Well, ArcGIS Runtime, of course, already has ways of getting location. And so we can use this thing called location display. And the advantage of location display on the map view is, um, well, for one, display of the location is going to be automatic. I don't have to, for example, create a graphic from the X and Y that I get back and then put it up on the display. All I have to do here is enable location display and the, um, that's it. I'll see my location show up as a, as a blip on the map. Another advantage is I can also handle um, changes to the location. So you can see here I'm handling location change. So every time I get a new location from the device, I can do something with that location. Um, just to keep it simple, for my example, I'm just going to capture the first position that comes in and use it to show places in the area. What I would probably want to do is have some logic that sees, am I you know, x meters away from the last location? Well, let's refresh our, our uh, point of interest list, something like that. OK, so I'm going to rerun this and look at location display. Um, spoiler alert, I am going to get an error here. So brace yourself, OK. 
yeah, so what happened here? I have a null reference exception. And when I first hit this, when I was putting the demo together, um, I did some debugging and I found out that it's location display that is coming back null. So that's where the exception is coming from. And to point out one of the resources here, I just went to GeoNet and I did a search for location display. And I found this right at the top, location display always null. And so what I found, someone had the similar issue when they moved to update six. And here's an answer from our colleague, Zach Allen. So what we need to do now is look for a property changed event on the map view and then query to see if the location display is available. Um, and then we can start working with it, then we can enable it. So just a few more lines of code to make that work. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of that code and bring in Zach's code instead. Okay. We'll wait a little bit to test that and let's uh, just keep building out some other things here. So as I look through, notice as the, um, when I get that location, I'm gonna show places. So I'm gonna call a function here that will show points of interest in the um, graphics overlay. So I'm getting places from the view model. This is bringing me back a list of graphics. And then I'm gonna display that in the graphics overlay here in the view. Now, another thing that I found looking at GeoNet was that you can improve graphics performance with add range versus add. So instead of iterating through every graphic and adding it individually to the graphics overlay, I can call add range, pass in a, an entire um, list of graphics, and it's much more efficient. And I can see by reading through here, um, you know, 10 to 15% reduction in execution time and 85, 90% reduction in temporary memory allocation. So um, kind of cool. Okay, so that's why I used add range there. Now nothing's happening at this point. <clears throat> Even though I call find places, I'm not getting anything back yet because I haven't written any code there. Here's my view model. And you'll notice I've just stubbed out a couple things. So I, kn I know that I need to find places. I know that I need to route to a, a location. So let's start with find places here. Um, I found in the developer's guide, there's a pretty good topic here that talks about searching for places. Um, there's a lot of overview here, this geocoding overview, which might be overkill. Um, but if I click down into using the task, I see a very succinct sort of list of steps. Um, and then I have some code examples. So I just copied and pasted here are these first two lines, um, because I know I need to create a locator task. And then I scrolled a little further to see what else I need to do. Um, I don't need to work with the locator info. Um, I don't need suggestions. Anyway, if I, as I rolled down here, I found I, there's a section for points of interest, and this is exactly what I was looking for. So finding things like with terms like restaurant, petrol, uh, coffee, and so on. So a nice code example I could use here shows me how to ask for result attributes as well. So I could ask for things like the URL, for example, and then show that in a, in a web browser. Okay, so I took that code and added it here. And I'm just going to uncomment that. And then I, I wanna just talk a little bit about some of the changes that I made here. Um, one important change, and I'm going to I'm going to update our our doc so that this is correct. Uh, the URL from the doc says HTTP. It really should be HTTPS. Um, if you don't change that, um, you might have some problems in iOS. Um, I guess almost guaranteed that you'd have some problems <laughs> without some extra configuration. Um, so that's one of the changes that I made. I found that out after trying to run the app, of course. I bumped up the maximum results from five to 10. 
Um, I used my location for the preferred search location. We were using the map center previously in, in the code example on the developer's guide. And then I asked for the URL as one of the result attributes. Um, just as a side note, you might be wondering, well, how did you know you could get that URL from those results? Um, there's a URL that I've put here. It's actually in the REST documentation. There's a, a URL that describes that service in, protect, in, in particular, the geocoding service, and uh, what's available for the outputs. Okay, so I get my matches from that code, and then I have code that creates some graphics from it. So I basically just transfer those result attributes over to a graphic, and then add the graphic to the list, and I pass back the list. All right, so that looks pretty good. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about this GeoView tapped event. So again, in, in the, the code behind for the view model, we're handling this event. And uh, what's going to happen here is I'm going to see what the user has tapped. So find the place that they've tapped, get some information about it, and just show a callout. It's going to be a simple callout. It just has the name and the address of the location that they clicked. Um, what I'm going to do with that, though, I'm going to make a call out definition, and then I can add a click event to handle um, a button on the call out, and I'm going to route to whatever location they chose and show that on the display. So again, the routing logic happens in the view model. So here I have route to POI async. And if I jump over here to my view model again, I'll see, whoops, let's follow through here first to the link. Again, from the developer's guide, we have a topic for finding a route or route, depending on what part of the country you're from. Um, so again, if I scroll through here, I'll see, here's how I make my, my route task and Again, I have HTTP instead of HTTPS, so I needed to change that when I copied that over. I needed to create some route task parameters, so I copied that code over. Stops. Stops are um, your from and to point for the location. I mean, for the route, sorry. I didn't need any barriers, so I didn't worry about that, that part. And then I knew that I could just go ahead and solve route async to execute the task. And then there's also some code that shows me how to process the results, um, how to get the route geometry from that, um, that, solid, that route task once it executes, and then show it as a um, graphic on the display. OK, so I have the code here already. Again, all I have to do is uncomment. And I can show you some of the changes that I made. So again, as I've mentioned, I changed this to HTTPS, very important. Um, here, the travel mode by default was driving. But since I'm, my assumption is that I'm in San Diego, uh, probably at the user conference here in uh, July, and I'm trying to find places on foot. So I didn't want to have to worry about one-way streets and things that I worry about in a car. I wanted a, a walking route. So I added some code here to find the travel mode. And so that just calls into this and finds the travel mode called walk. Everything else is essentially the same. Um, instead of just getting the first route result, I do use first or default and then return if it's null. And I show the route in purple instead of yellow. But other than that, this is the same code that I've had in the uh, developer's guide. OK. so. We've written a lot of code there. We might as well go ahead and test. See what this looks like. And again, you can see that it, it really does build and launch pretty quickly. So let's look for some ice cream. There's my location display coming in. Here's my different locations. And Ben and Jerry sounds good. And I'll go ahead and navigate to that. 
Now, when I originally tested this app and I didn't set the, walk, the, the travel mode to walk, I did see it go around here on these one-way streets. And that's what clued me in that I needed to update that travel mode. Uh, by the way, I should mention that uh, this project will be available on my uh, GitHub repo for, for download, and I'll give you the URL for that later if you're interested. Okay, I guess that was everything that we did so far, right? We, we added code to select these locations to show the callout, to handle the, the click for routing. Um, there is something tricky here I need to show you about the callout that I almost forgot to, to talk about. Um, this was kind of interesting. When I was looking at the uh, code example for showing, for adding a button click to a callout, um, what was passed in here was kind of mysterious. You know, it just says new action object. And in the example that I saw, they were calling that, that argument was called S. So I had no idea what that was. Um, so I looked at the API reference for this. And if I look at the remarks, it'll actually say the action will receive the value of the full stop. Um, it shows up in the source code in the API ref, but something about the rendering of the HTML, um, something got lost in translation there, some bad formatting, and it stripped that part of the API reference out. So. That's another task that I've, um, another thing I've tasked myself with to, to fix up in our API ref. Um, so spoiler alert, this is actually the tag that comes in. Whatever you've tagged on the callout definition, um, that's what you'll get passed into this action. Um, and this is where I don't, well, I wish where I was presenting live because I could see if you're laughing at that or if you're really angry. Uh, there's probably maybe a, a mixed reaction to that. Hopefully, um, none of you guys have dealt with that frustration directly. <laughs> okay, so the last thing to do, I know this is uh, taking a while here, but we're in the, in the home stretch. I want to add some of these toolkit controls. So if I go to the samples, here I'm in the toolkit repo, and I'm going into the samples, um, I'm just going to copy and paste directly from these toolkit control uh, sample pages. So that was compass, and now I'm going to get scale line. Now it's not quite as easy as just copying and pasting because it uses um, a reference to the map view here, and our map view name is different. So I need to just make sure that I update that. But that's pretty painless, and now that should, should work as expected. I should be able to see a compass in the upper right. <laughs> All right. What did I do wrong? I have auto hide set to true. Um, oh, no, it's false. You know what? I'm just going to try. Oh, I did save it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just clean and, and rebuild. But um, let me just make sure. Eh, I didn't complain about anything. Usually this is what will get you into trouble if you're not referring to the right map view, but um, my map view. Okay. Um, And this will take a little bit longer since it's rebuilding. But another thing that I want to show you once it comes up is something called Hot Reload. And um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this or not, but a really cool feature of Xamarin Forms, you can um, make edits to your um, XAML while the app is running. And then when you save that, you'll see the, the app UI will update with the changes that you've made. So if you want to change... Um, some text that's in the UI or um, colors or spacing or whatever, you'll actually see it show up real time. So it's really pretty cool. Okay, so there we go. I rebuilt and there I can see my compass up in the upper right and here's my scale line down at the bottom. Um, the cool thing about the compass, it'll, it'll, if I rotate the map, it'll show me which way is north, obviously. So I don't have any rotation going on now. 
But um, remember, if you're navigating, so I might want to navigate to one of these locations, you might have it set so that the map rotates as you're navigating and that the compass can come in handy in those type of situations. Um, okay, yeah, so I was going to show you this hot reload thing. So I'm going to go back over here and I have a button. I'm going to uncomment. And I do have to save before it shows up, but once I save it, you'll see it reload. And yeah, I lost some of the information on my, on my map. It's just showing the base map. But you can see here's the button, um, but I also wanted to add a row, another row definition so it looks a little bit cleaner down there. Oh, and it just says button one. I wanted to say um, view web page. All right, so let's go ahead and save that and see if that looks a little better. Okay, I'm gonna go back into the page just to reset everything. Okay, looks good. And yeah, so let's look at, oh, we've already done this on the, the original app, but let's go ahead and select a location, make sure that our view web page functionality works. And there we go. And if you're curious, I'll show you that um, code for showing the web page. Really simple. And I found it here on the, the Microsoft Docs page. So browser.openasync. Again, this is from Xamarin Essentials. OK, so that's how we used the some of the resources available in the SDK to uh, build out an app. And now let me just figure out how to get my slides back up and we'll be good. OK, yeah, so just to summarize what we saw there in the, in the demo, uh, you saw how quickly Mac uh, built and deployed from, from the, uh, how quickly the iOS app built and deployed from Mac. So Visual Studio for Mac was, is very nice for building out iOS applications. Showed you lots of SDK resources, Xamarin Essentials, and lots of MVVM stuff. So it's kind of nice that our uh, templates and most of the code that you find will enforce that MVVM design pattern. Um, all the templates that come from Xamarin and all the templates that come from ArcGIS Runtime as well. So just to wrap up some um, tips and tricks that we saw, consider developing with uh, Visual Studio for Mac. Um, take it from a lifelong Windows guy and um, a die-hard Windows Visual Studio developer. I, I love uh, Visual Studio for Mac if I'm working with iOS and Android. It works very well. Hot Reload, as you saw, is a kind of a cool feature. Uh, nice for tweaking your UI, uh, especially since, as Nathan mentioned, um, the UI can look a lot different across these platforms. So you might want to um, make some tweaks while one of these one of your apps is running um, and see what it looks like. Xamarin Essentials, I'd, I'd recommend checking out the doc page on Microsoft Docs for that. There's lots of good stuff that you can take advantage of. One thing we didn't look at too much, but it's very important, is testing. Uh, make sure you test on lots of devices. Maybe you're lucky enough to just have an app that's going to be supported on, on one uh, device or you know a handful of devices, and you know exactly what you're going to be running on. Not that common, though. Usually, um, once it's out in the wild, it could be run on a lot of different devices, and it's good to just test as much as you can. Um, also, of course, design is, is key for creating cross-platform applications anywhere. But, um, you know, so in Xamarin, you really need to make sure you use uh, MVVM or some kind of solid design pattern um, that'll facilitate um, code sharing and UI sharing as well. All right, well, thanks a lot for listening. And we're sorry we didn't see you in Palm Springs this year. Hopefully we'll see you next year or we'll see you at um, in San Diego at the UC. Take care.